What's going on guys? So today I'm out here at Ron Hoover RV and Marine in Corpus Christi, Texas, and we are gonna take a look at that. You heard me right. This thing is tiny. This thing's only about 18 feet long total from the very, very front ball to the back bumper. The interior of this is only about 15 and a half feet long. This is one of the smallest normal travel trailers besides being specifically a compact unit that I filmed and I think you're gonna to wanna to take a look at it. So hang tight, I'll be right back. All right guys, so you were looking at the J Flight SLX. This is the 154 BH. This is a cool unit because it's a bunkhouse and the fact that they even threw an awning on it. I mean, this thing is super compact, but let's take a look at the numbers on it. So this tiny little travel trailer has a gross vehicle weight rating of 3,250 pounds. It has a single axle that's rated at 3,500 pounds, 205, 75, 14 tires, and they are Goodyear endurance tires. So you're actually getting a quality tire with this unit. Cargo capacity is only 560 pounds, but you know what? This thing is a really compact unit. Loading it up with that much weight would probably be rather difficult, especially if you're using that weight while you're towing. Has a standard lever front jack on it, a single propane can. You can see it has a front window right here. Of course, you probably can tell by now this is a stick and tin unit, which means aluminum siding over a wooden frame. Has steel wheels, Goodyear Endurance tires, a very good tire. Steel step, coming around, let's take a look inside of this little spot here. Believe it or not, that's actually a pretty good size storage. This is a tire that goes on the front tongue jack. This is probably about two feet deep, maybe a foot and a couple inches tall. And overall width of this is probably close to five feet. Very cool. Not even gonna comment on the width of the baggage door because it really doesn't matter on a door that small. You have an awning on the side. The awning looks to be about a nine, maybe eight foot awning. I wanna say it's probably an eight foot awning, maybe slightly larger. You have all LED lighting, which is really nice. This one is not wired for a Furion wireless backup camera, which you probably really don't need on something this small. Coming around to this side, you have your waste release right there, back of your hood vent, back of your refrigerator. This is gonna be the bottom part of your refrigerator cable satellite connection, back of your furnace, and the back of your water heater, plus your tank fill, city water connection, and your 30 amp connection right here. Let's take a look inside of this really compact J-Flight SLX 154BH. Nice little grab handle right there. That's cool, it has a hydraulic cylinder here, so in lieu of putting a friction hinge or not putting one, they actually put a little hydraulic cylinder which opens and holds the door for you. That is really nice. Stepping inside of this no slide, tiny little travel trailer. First of all, let's focus on the price. MSRP of 20 grand, a little over 20 grand, has a sales price of $13,499. This is great for folks who are gonna be doing just basic weekend camping, wanting to get out by a lake, even take it out to the beach for the day. It's just a good unit for that, honestly. It's got nice space. So up front, you have your dinette area, and believe it or not, it is a very large dinette. It's probably at least four feet long. So you could easily sit probably six people here, four adults and two small children, or two adults and four small children. This also converts into a full-size bed, which is really nice. So if you're not bringing that many people with you, you could easily turn this into a bed, which would be your master bed. As you come around here past the kitchen, you can see in the back, you have something special. So back here, this is a bunkhouse. So you have two bunks. And these bunks are very long, so the length of these bunks are probably pushing six feet, whereas the height is probably going to be about two feet per bunk. This bottom one has a little bit more height to it. But you have plenty of bunk space, you have some power connections there, you have a grab handle to get into it. Nice, real thick mattress pads, they're the Teddy Bear series, very soft. Now stepping back a little bit, you can see that you have a good sized pantry right here with bottom storage, you have a cabinet right here, no drawers, but you do have lots of cabinet space and countertop space, especially considering how small this trailer is. 
good countertop space here. You have your refrigerator down here, two burner cooktop there, high point microwave, more cabinets up here, more cabinets up here. Inside, honestly, because of how they utilize this space, it feels like some of those other units that people associate with this type of space, like the micro lights and things like that. You have your single air conditioning unit, which is not ducted, but because of how it's designed, you have these little vents that can open up all the way around to blow air in all sorts of different directions based on where you need it. Let's take a look at the bathroom. Okay, so it's not a huge bathroom, but you do have an actual tub. So you have a tub. Now, one thing to note, these walls right here are fiberglass, so they are designed so you can actually get them wet without them rotting. Most RVs usually put a plastic around this simply so you get the look at least of a shower, which I kind of wish they would have done. There's a lot of really cheap solutions to cover this, and I wish they would have done that. You still get your skylight. You get the nice curved shower curtain here to give you a little bit more room inside. Mirror on the back wall, plus you have a plastic style foot flush toilet, very reminiscent of most lower price travel trailers. Coming back out, it's actually a pretty good size space. I mean, it's not as if you get into one of these expecting it to be huge, but the fact that you can comfortably sleep four people in here and you have a huge dinette area really makes sense for a lot of folks. I mean, this is a great unit if you're just going to take out for the day. If you're going to go out to the beach, if you're going to go somewhere that you simply are going to spend the day, you want a place that you might be able to eat and relax in case it starts raining, a place to take a shower if you go to the beach, a place that you can cook a meal, and you don't want to spend a lot of money. $13,499 for something like this is a pretty good deal in my opinion. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this compact trailer. This thing's pretty cool. You know, it's not very often that you see this much stuff crammed into roughly 15 and a half feet worth of cargo space. I mean, there's just not a lot of space in here. A lot of people would say, get a cargo trailer that's 20 feet long and convert it. But the fact is, you're going to pay about eight grand for a cargo trailer. Then you're going to have to put probably another four or five grand into it just to get some of this stuff, unless you know how to build it yourself. But it's going to cost a lot of money regardless. The fact that you can get pretty much a cargo trailer style RV no slides, none of that, $13,499, and you might even be able to negotiate that price a little lower. But with all these amenities, your windows are already cut out of it, insulated already, with an air conditioning system set up for cooking, where the codes that they have to abide by when building these are already in play. There's a lot to like about this. Anyways, guys, I sure hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't had a chance, please take a moment, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, and we'll talk to you again very soon.